Here's how I developed the first five rolls from my series where I drove to every single one of the lower 48 states and asked a thousand strangers for life advice before photographing them on this 50 year old film camera. I didn't develop any of the rolls from the 84 days that I was on the road talking to strangers. And so now I've got a backlog of about 85 rolls of 120 film that I need to develop and I'd like to do it as efficiently as possible. Now first things first, I have to get all of the film in order by day. Now every single roll of film is labeled with its date. If I shot more than one roll in the day, it's labeled with which roll number it is and I can only develop five rolls at a time so I get the first five rolls, put them in order here. Now I put the film rolls into this case which has a piece of black tape on one side. Now that's there so that in total darkness I can still feel that piece of tape and know what order I'm loading the rolls of film. So I put the latest roll of those five on the side with the black piece of tape so that in total darkness I can feel and know that okay I need to get the leftmost one which is the side that doesn't have the piece of tape and load that first and then go in order. That way I can keep track, at least for myself, of, of how I'm developing the film then when I unload it later at the end of this I still can hang it in order of how it was shot so that I don't lose track of which roll is which. Now I'm using what's called a Patterson tank and this is an extraordinarily large version of it. Usually Patterson tanks can develop just one roll of 120 film at a time. That's a standard size Patterson tank. This is the largest version you can get and it develops five 120 rolls at a time. Now this tank is totally light proof which allows me to develop in broad daylight. A question I got from a lot of the strangers is uh, do you have a dark room? Like, are you developing this yourself? And I said, I don't have a dark room, but yes, I am developing myself because I've got a dark changing bag where I can load the film and I've got a, a special type of tank, the Patterson tank, which allows me to develop in broad daylight, no matter where I am. So the inside of this dark changing bag after zipping up the zipper and putting on the, the Velcro things is totally light proof and I can put my hands into it so that I can load everything in there. And once I've loaded all that film, I've got a little bit of leftover like trash. This is the backing of the rolls of film that doesn't need to be developed, of course. That just protects it from any light from when I'm shooting the rolls and when they're just being stored. So before developing, I put on some gloves and I do what's called one-to-one, -one, which is where you dilute your developer liquid with an equal part of water, hence one-to-one, -one, which not only lessens the margin of error for developing times and temperatures, it also makes the film look sharper by accentuating the grain at the end of it. So I pour two and a half liters of the one-to-one -one developer and water into the tank and I start the agitation process. So agitation is that turning up and down motion that you see. So I agitate for the first minute and then I agitate for about 10 to 15 seconds at the top of each minute after that. Now after agitating each time, I also tap the tank real hard on the counter, which if there are any uh, air bubbles stuck to the film inside the tank, tapping it is what gets rid of those air bubbles. And it's important to get rid of those air bubbles because if you don't, you get uneven film. You'll get little splotches on the film. There are a lot of different factors that affect the amount of time that you develop for. That includes the type of film you're using, the type of developer you're using, whether you dilute it, and the room temperature. So for example, if it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit in the room, which means your chemicals are also going to be 68 degrees Fahrenheit, you develop, in this case, what I'm using for 10 minutes and 15 seconds. Now, if the temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, just two degrees more, you develop for nine minutes and 15 seconds. So an increase in temperature of two degrees Fahrenheit means that you develop for a full minute less. So that's why I like to do one-to-one -one because again, temperature fluctuates and not everything's always perfect. The room is not always 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So one-to-one -one developing allows for a longer developing time, which again means less margin for error in the amount of time developing. When I'm done with the developer, I pour it into this waste bucket so that I can dispose of it properly. And then I add in something called stop bath. And stop bath is pretty self-explanatory. It is literally something that stops the film from developing. So after I've poured out the developer, there's still going to be some residual, you know, droplets of developer in there. Stop bath gets poured in there and neutralizes any of that left over. Now it's also reusable. So I pour it back into its container. And what's fun about that is that it's kind of yellowish as it's mixed like that. And when it's not reusable anymore, it turns purple. That's awesome. The stop bath process is really quick. It literally only takes one minute and then I pour it back into its container so I can use it again in the future. Now after the stop bath, I pour in something called Fixer. Now Fixer, yeah, technically it gets rid of any leftover silver halide, but in more like fifth grade terms, it makes 
the image permanent, visible, and no longer susceptible to light the way film would be before this process. This particular film I use, Kodak T-Max 400, is pretty intense on fixer, so it needs to be fixed for 10 minutes, whereas most other films only need to be fixed for about five minutes. Now, after that's done, again, the fixer is reusable, and there's a way to test that to make sure it's still good also, but that, that doesn't really matter for this. After that 10 minutes of fixer, I pour it back into its container, it's also reusable for quite a while. And the final step is to rinse the film with water. Now there was a point in time before I was born where this process, the rinsing, was insanely water intensive. And there's a better way that uses less water to rinse the film. It's called the 5-10-20 method. That's where you fill the tank, agitate five times, and then dump the water, fill it again, agitate 10 times, dump it, fill it, and then agitate 20 times, and then dump that. That still sounds like a lot of water, but I trust me, it's so, so, so much less than what a lot of labs would use back in the day again before I was born. Now after that 20 agitation rinse, the final thing is to do a rinse with something called PhotoFlow. Now PhotoFlow is super concentrated, so it really only takes a few milliliters of PhotoFlow for a full two and a half liter bath. So I put a few drops into the two and a half liters of water, pour that into the tank, and then kind of agitate a little bit and let it soak for just 30 seconds before dumping it out. Now what PhotoFlow does is it makes sure that the film dries flat, clean, meaning no splotchiness on it, and quick. All of which means I get better photos faster. Now once all of that is done, I can take the film out of the tank and hang it up to dry. I put a little clip at the bottom of each of them so that again it helps to make sure it dries nice and flat. One of my least favorite things is working with curly negatives. They're hard to scan, they're hard to store, it's just annoying. Again, photo flow and even a little clip here at the bottom helps to make sure that it dries flat. After a few hours of drying at least, usually I just wait overnight, I can cut the film and put them into sleeves. And these are archival sleeves, they protect the film for the long term, and in the short term they also protect the film from dust, water, moisture in the air, whatever it might be, it's just a safe way to store film. Now one of the nice things about putting your film into sleeves like this is that you can then put it onto a light box and view your negatives. And I've also got a little magnifying loop where I can put it onto that sleeve and I can look at it at 10 times magnification. Now, now what's also fun about this is if I take a photo of the full sleeve of one roll of film, I can then invert that and edit it in Photoshop and you can kind of get a glimpse at what your photos are going to look like from that roll. Pre-Photoshop days, this would be called a contact print and it would be done directly on a photo sensitive piece of paper. But it's a lot easier for me, because I don't have a dark room, to just take a photo of it on a light box and do that digitally. Now digitizing for each individual photo is a little bit more complex, but long story short, I take a digital photo of the film negative using a special holder in a light box to convert it in, you know, a computer, digitally. All of that to yield a final image that looks something like this. This is the first stranger who I talked to on my journey, stranger number 0001. Someone who I met somewhere in Ohio and who gave me life advice relating to spending more time with your family while they're still around. So this whole film development process was just for the first five rolls of my journey. I have 80 more to go, which means I have to do this whole session 16 more times and then after that, I will rent a higher megapixel digital camera to scan every single one of the thousand plus photos uh, on film. If you enjoyed this, feel free to follow along by subscribing here on YouTube, but also following on my TikTok and Instagram, which I'll put on the screen here. But thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.